So we are going to have Dr. Darlene Westinghouse speak to us today. <laughs> PhD. What is your doctorate in anyway? I forget all the time. Educational leadership, right, which is something I need a lot, educational <laughs> leadership. So Darlene is going to share with us today. Would you? Hi, thank you. Okay, Nate. I have a PowerPoint, and um, today's um, message is on coming to the table. And there's a song that I want to play for you. It's over four minutes, so I'm going to play a couple minutes now and then a couple minutes at the end. And uh, Mark and I are going to tag team this a little bit. All right. We all stuck on the outside, the outside looking in. This is where grace begins. We were hungry, we were thirsty, with nothing left to give for the shape that we were in. Just when all hope seemed lost. Love opened the door for us. He said, come to the table. Come join the sinners within the redeemed. Take your place beside the Savior. Sit down and be set free. Come to the table. Come meet this mighty crew in this space. There's tigers and there's There's no one who will be. So that's in shame that you brought with. Pretty cool, right? Um, I've had this word on my heart since spring. I mentioned it to Dave. And I heard that she had a word uh, for our church and it was coming to the table as well. I asked Dave and then um, he shared last week and it just brought it to my heart. So um, when Corey put the table up, there was no food. There's a lot of food on this. <laughs> so first of all, I want to ask you, what does it mean to come to the table? based on a little bit that you saw on the video, based on what you might be thinking. What do you think it means to come to the table? And uh, I like interaction, so you can raise your hand. And if there's anything I share that you don't understand, because it might be uh, a different language, different culture of the kingdom of God, please raise your hand. I'll be happy to tell you. Yes? Is that share? Pardon? Share the food. Share the food. OK. OK. Right, yes. Okay, so this is very good, Nate. Um, can you go to the next slide? So, that, so we, what we spoke of was food, and that brings me to the next part, is that we're made of body, soul, and spirit. And when we are born, we need food. We need nourishment, right? Because the natural man, that's our flesh, this, this body and everything, we, if we don't have food and water, we'll die, right? Our, our, our uh, physical being will actually die. And 
So we need that kind of nourishment, and that's what you were both talking about. But coming to the table that I'm going to talk about today is coming to the spiritual table for spiritual food. Because just as we don't feed our bodies with the right nourishment and we die or get sick, if we don't feed our spiritual, our spirit, with the right food from heaven, we also can die in the spirit or get sick. And we're not living up to our full potential. Because as David said, we have a destiny. We have a destiny in Christ. Every single one of us here, there's no one that is left out, as that song said. No one. He said the liars and the thieves and everybody can come. And we tend not to go to that table of the Lord because we feel guilty or shame or whatever we have in our hearts. We tend to think we have to get ourselves together before we can go to the table of the Lord. And that's the opposite. Like Tommy said, he's our defender. He's not, he's not up there ready to prosecute you. He died for you. And he's defending you. He's interceding to the Father for you. And he wants to give you all that he has from that spiritual table. And we tend not to go there very much because we just get into the flesh, right? So when I think about coming to the table, I think of four things. I think of prayer, right? Spending time with him. I think of getting in the word. I think of fellowship. And I think of worship. And those are four things that we should be doing in order to come to the table of the Lord to be fed. Okay. So... um, I've noticed as growing up in a, as a Christian that there's always two realms that kind of go side by side. What happens in the natural kind of happens in the spiritual too. So in the natural we need to eat food and in the spiritual we need to eat food. And that happens a lot. There's a lot of comparisons from the natural to the spiritual. Um, okay, so let's go to the next slide. I mean, click again. The other thing we need to take care of is our minds. Not A lot of times we have junk food, right? And if David and Linda eat gluten, they're going to get sick. If I eat sugar, forget it. You have to take me to the hospital. Um, but our mind is also very important to feed the spiritual in. In Philippians it says to think on things that are good and pure and lovely and true. And it's so hard to do that when we're worried and maybe have fear or, um, I mean, it's just so hard. But this is what God wants us to do. He wants us to be careful what we put into our minds. I had a friend who had a fear of going out. I forgot what you call it, ag or something. And um, she used to go to counseling up in Albany. And they told her that it's the very thoughts that she has during, like, the day that actually affect what happens to her with her fear. I find that so interesting because I do that too. Like I'll think I'm getting away with thinking about my fears or my problems and my anxieties because I think I'm trying to figure it out. And then the next day, I'm a wreck. I have an anxiety attack or something from it. Do you know what I'm saying? And I found that your uh, body can react your react even when you're not realizing it. I know that, and you all know that I lost my son last year, and um, it's been probably the hardest year of my life. And I noticed that I think I'm okay. I'll look at his pictures. I'll look at a memory. And the next day, I have a full-blown anxiety attack. And I didn't put them together. And I went to the doctor uh, for my physical, and she said, You're doing all the right things up here, but your body has a different mind, and it reacts. And I never put the two together, but that's exactly, as I looked back over the year, that's exactly what happens. So be careful what you're putting into your mind. Be careful how you're dwelling on your problems and your fears and and who you are and and guilt and shame and all the stuff that comes up from the flesh. But we're not to live in the flesh, right? Um, 
You can go to the next one. So here's what happens when we live in the flesh. We start to go not to the table of the Lord for our deliverance. We go to other things that give us a quick fix. How many times have you gone to the table of the Lord with a problem and it didn't go away? So what do you do? You give up. You just haphazardly go then, right? I've learned a lesson that I'm learning a lesson that my husband tried to teach me since we've been dating. <laughs> I'm just starting to get it. When I have anxiety or fear or I'm worried or troubled and I go to the table of the Lord, I expect all of that feeling to go away. But that doesn't, that's not it. And I was like, well, I went there. Perfect love casts out fear. Well, I still have it. And I'm learning that God gives us something supernatural, a peace that passes understanding. You may still be in the storm and feel the storm all over you and all around you and in you, but there's this cleft in the rock that my husband teaches me about and the Holy Spirit that you can hold on to in the midst of that, knowing in faith that he will deliver you. Knowing in faith that he's your defender. Knowing in faith that he's going to see you through this. And not only that, he turns it to good. Whatever your troubles are, he will turn it to good and bring life out of it. I'm just learning that just because the feelings don't go away doesn't mean that God's not with me and for me and is going to get me out of it. But because we want a quick fix, we tend to go maybe to alcohol, or maybe to drugs, or pornography, or we may pick on our husbands, wives. We may get anger issues. We have all kinds of issues that the flesh will have you go to for a quick fix. And that's not your destiny. That's not what God has for you. He has life. He has life. And we just have to be patient for, the, for this life to evolve. There is nothing that can happen to you that God is not watching over you, defending you, praying for you, hoping for you, and will deliver you. So whatever you're going through, yield it to him. Go to the table and eat the spiritual food that he has for you. There's a scripture in Romans 8 that I just want to read. Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the spirit have their minds set on what the spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death. But the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. Now when he talks about death there, he's talking about death to life and peace. He's death to joy, death to prosperity, death to that abundant life. When we go to the flesh for our answers, and believe me, that's where I would go all the time. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. Now, I have to tell you, um, everybody that knows me knows that I have hormonal things and I get anxiety and I have fear and I go through this whole thing. And um, not all the time, just when I have, you know, after a baby or menopause or your son dies things like that anyway um, when I went through a really hard time once and I mean it was really bad and it was God himself who taught me how to think who taught me how to live how did he do that well I had to go to the table I was so bad I, I tried to figure it out myself Every single fear that I had, I tried to work out. It was like being in a cage, punching the bars, 
trying to get out of this, this thing that was telling me a fear that wasn't true and trying to do it in my own strength. And I couldn't do it. But when I learned to go to the table, God opened the cage door. And then he let you out. And how did he do that? In the word. I learned in the word how to think. I learned in the word not to live by the flesh. I learned all of that by the word of God. He led me by the Holy Spirit to the scriptures that would help to set me free. And I wrote a book about it called Being Set Free. And my daughter, being a therapist, social worker, she said, Mom, you learned cognitive behavior therapy, and I never went to a therapist. It was all the Lord through the Word of God that taught me that. Because He has the answers for us. He has the answers for us at the table. So Jesus says, um, He declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Will never be thirsty. It doesn't mean you won't have problems. It won't, doesn't mean your finances won't be bad. It doesn't mean that you won't have anxiety and, and go through the most horrible trials of life that you can think of. But it means that he's the bread and the water that quenches our thirst and our life. Like Tommy said, um, He's our defender. And I know, like I said from the beginning, we try to figure it out on our own before we go to the Lord. Because sometimes we have shame and guilt and fear, anxiety, problems, we tend to shrink back from God because we don't want to go there. We're, we're going to work it out and then we're going to go to God and we'll be good. And that's the opposite. Like, like Tommy said, that's the opposite of what God wants. He is the one that heals us. He's the one that delivers us. Now when I have those things, I go to him and say, help me. Help me. You're my maker. You have to help me. I can't do this on my own. So don't let your shortcomings keep you from God. He wants you to go to the table. That's where he has your healing. That's where he has the food of life. Um, so we have excuses. That's one of them. And then in um, Luke, there's a, a scripture that says, and then he, he said to a, man, a certain man, he gave a great supper and he invited many people. God, he, he had a great supper and he invited many people. And he sent a service at supper time to say to those who were invited, come, come today, come, for all things are ready now. Come. Come, the Lord says. But they all, with one accord, began to make excuses. The first said to him, um, I bought a piece of ground and I have to go see it. So I'm going to ask to be excused. And then another one said, well, I bought five yoke of oxen and I have to go be with them. I have to go test them. So I would like to be excused. Another said, well, I just got married. I have a wife and I can't come. So you know what? <laughs> we all have excuses for not going to the table. You know what yours are. I know what mine are. But that's where our life is. And when we finally figure that out, we're going to be free. We're going to be free when we realize who God is for us. He's our life. Um, there's another scripture I want to talk about. And I've shared this before in Haggai. It's, he, now Haggai, this is about the Israelites were in Babylon in captivity for 70 years or something. And King Cyrus of Babylon said, okay, I'm going to release you, go back to your land and build the temple of the Lord. Okay? So the people went back and after 16 years they still didn't have the temple built. And the word came, is it time for you yourselves to dwell in your paneled houses and this temple to lie in rooms? The Lord said, basically what he was saying is, all you care about is your own life and you're not co considering the temple of the Lord. And he said, consider your ways. You've sown much and you bring in little. 
You drink, but you are not filled with drink. You clothe yourself, but no one's warm. And he who earns wages puts them in a bag with holes. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. Go up to the mountain and bring the wood and build the temple, that I may take pleasure in it and be glorified, says the Lord. So that was in the Old Testament, and they actually built a, a temple made of wood. But what's the temple today? We are. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And how can we stop thinking about our own me, 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 see that me, 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 and build this temple? What's the spiritual food? What are the spiritual tools? What's the spiritual wood that we can use to build our temple? to be filled with the Holy Spirit, and to be walking in the destiny that God created for us. Like I said, it doesn't mean you don't have it. troubles. <laughs> Trust me, you do. That, that may happen. But he has something for us in the midst of it that we cannot ignore anymore. So I was reading online, and I came across, and I really like this, this um, Kynan Bridges. He's a pastor in Florida. And he said, he, he wrote in his book called Kingdom Authority, something called the orphan spirit. Now, I don't know about you, but we're not orphans. God, Jesus came to die for us, and now we're sons and daughters. And we can call him father. We are not orphans, so we should stop living like we're orphans. He said the orphan spirit is the spirit of fear and insecurity that comes from not knowing our identity in Christ. Wow. Like Tommy said in the beginning, we think God's the prosecutor. Why do we think that? We were raised a lot with religious spirit and we're used to the law. If you break the law, you get punished. You know what I mean? God is our defender. We need to know who we are in Christ. We need to know our identity in him, that he is for us. He's hoping for us. Yes, if we do reap what we sow in the natural, but that doesn't mean it separates you from his love. His love is always there, rooting for you. Rooting for you. Don't separate yourself from him because of your own shortcomings. Don't separate yourself from him because of your own shortcomings. This guy was saying that he found that almost every form of bondage in a believer's life is connected to that orphan spirit, not knowing who we are in Christ and really believing it and trusting. And he, he quoted the scripture I like, but when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will, for he will not speak on his own authority, but he will speak whatever he hears, and he will tell you things that are to come. We need to have a close relationship with the Lord, a close relationship with the Holy Spirit. You know, when I wake up in the morning, sometimes I wake up filled with guilt for nothing, for nothing, just a feeling I have, or anxiety, or fears that have no rational truth to them. And I have to go by the Word of God. I have to walk by the truth of God. That's my, that's my center. It's Jesus. It's the truth. I can't walk in what I feel because what I feel is crazy. I have, to walk. <laughs> I have to walk by God's truth all the time. And that's what he's saying here. It's the Holy Spirit. He will speak to us the truth because he will guide us in the truth. And um, we can't live in the lie anymore. There's a world out there, as David said, that needs the truth. And we have to learn to walk in it. We are not orphans. We are beautiful children of God. And he has a destiny for us. And we, don't, we want to walk in that destiny of peace and hope. So I told this story once, and I want to tell it again. There was a young man who um, wanted to go to the new land. Okay? And he had to take a ship across the big ocean. And he was going to be in this ship for 10 days. So him and his mom saved enough money to just to buy the ticket for this, um, for this trip. 
Because they didn't have enough money to buy food on the ship, what they did was the mother packed food for him, lots of food, so that he could get through each day on this ship. At near the end of the days, he ran out of the food that his mom packed for him. And every day, he would look in the dining hall, and he would see the more wealthy people eating and feasting, right? So near the, I think it was the second to the last day, somebody came out and said, you know, I see you out here every day or every night eating from, you know, the crumbs or whatever you have. He goes, why, why don't you come into the dining room and eat with us? And he said, oh, I didn't have enough money to buy the ticket for the food part of this. And he said, it was included in your purchase of the ship's trip. So all that time, the food was included in the price. But because he didn't know that, he had to eat the crumbs or the, the little snacks his mom prepared. And I think about us as God's people. That dining room full of the spiritual food of God is open to us. We can go in and eat freely. And we don't have to think that we're set apart, that we don't have what it takes to go in there. You know what? We don't. But because Jesus Christ died on that cross, his blood washes us clean, we are free to go and partake of all the beautiful foods in the spirit that he has for us. Isn't that cool? So, um, I'm going to go to the next uh, slide. And so, so I'm just, I only have two more. And then Mark's going to share something. So that the God of our Lord um, Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, that the eyes of our understanding may be enlightened, that we may know what is the hope of his calling and what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance among the saints. That's us. That's us. May our eyes, all of us here, be opened and enlightened that we may know the riches of our inheritance, not just when we die and go to heaven, but here on earth. Right? So we need to start living in the supernatural. What does that mean? Well, being close to God. Being close to God, trusting, living in the truth. And I just wrote some points down. Um, if right. So we cannot live this life without the Spirit of God. He is a breath of our life. Just like we have to breathe in air to live, we also have to breathe in the Spirit of God. And we can't live without being yoked to him. He is the vine and we are the branches and we need to abide in him. Um, the Spirit is willing but the flesh is weak. Our flesh is always going to want to go to what makes us feel good. And not that that's bad in some ways, but always... Um, Consider the spirit. If we try to walk this walk in our own strength, we are going to be malnourished in the spirit and we're going to be orphans. Um, we are in a battle and the victory is in Christ, not by our strength, not by our might, but only in the spirit of God. And I already gave you my personal testimony, so I don't have to do that. But what I'm asking you today is that if you have been missing this spiritual food, you've been missing coming to the table of the Lord and receiving the nourishment in your spirit from him, then after Mark talks, we're going to play the rest of that song, Come to the Table. And I, come up for prayer, because there are people here that can pray for you. This is a hard walk. It's a very hard walk. But God has the ways for us to be delivered, to be transformed. I have to tell you, all, the, all that I went through, I hate every minute of it. But I have been changed into someone I wasn't a long time ago. My aunt's here, she'll tell you. I'm not the same person. God did something in me, and he continues to do it, and he's doing it in all of us. Suffering is not always bad. Ooh, I hate it, I hate it, I admit it. But in Christ, he can turn it to such beauty and gold in our life. Um, okay, Mark, do you want to come up?
I'm just going to share a little bit so you don't have to worry. I'm not going to be a long time here. Uh, Dara asked me uh, just to share a moment where, uh, just an example of where I went to the table, uh, to partake of the table that God has for us. And uh, I, uh, there's many, uh, when I became a Christian, I became a Christian in, in God's supernatural power. He, he, he met me in such supernatural power. It was uh, absolutely astounding. And through the, through the years, he's, he's done many things where he breaks through the barriers of the natural realm with supernatural power in my life. And he is able to do that for all of us. I'm, I'm no different than anybody here. God has that for all of us. The, the only thing that I, I have is an inclination towards God. I incline my ear towards God. I'm always expecting God to be God. And God has no limitations. And Dar was talking about um, sometimes we have to wait for God to do what we want, we would like him to do for us. And there's a scripture in Isaiah that says, those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength and they shall mount up with wings like eagles. And this is, this is our God. Many, many times in my life, prayers and, and that I have sought for God uh, haven't come for 10, 15 years later. The answer has come, it has taken that long. But the timing was perfect. God knows the t perfect timing for every single one of us in every situation that we have. He is powerful. He is supernatural, supernaturally powerful. And Dar was talking about being in the Word and and uh, and praying and uh, worshiping and what was the other one? Fellowship. And fellowship. These are these are ways that God can reveal His power to us. And and just in worship, uh, just a small example. I've had many supernatural examples, but God mostly speaks to us in gentle moments of life. That's where most of the time that he will speak to us. And when we are in worship here today, <laughs> excuse me, God spoke to me, spoke to me in, in a powerful way, in just, but it was a, just a him, just a, a whisper. He answered me in worship. When I come here to worship, I give God my whole heart in worship. And he answered me. And that's our God. Our God wants, to, wants us all to come to the table. And we need to come to the table to receive the life of God. And it's just that simple. And that's it.